Blessed be the longing that brought us here and quickens our souls with wonder. May our hearts be open to hear what you have said you have to say to us this day. And may we ponder anew the possibility of the impossible. Zacharias, a priest tending to his duties in the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, was visited by an angel of the Lord who said, your prayers have been heard. Your wife Elizabeth is going to have a son and you will name him John. Six months later in Nazareth, a city in the rural province of Galilee, the heavenly messenger Gabriel made another appearance. This time, the messenger was sent by God to meet with a virgin named Mary, who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David himself. The messenger entered her home. Greetings. You are favored, and the Lord is with you. Among all women on earth, you have been blessed. The heavenly messenger's words baffled Mary, and she wondered what type of greeting this was. Mary, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. Listen, you are going to become pregnant. You will have a son, and you must name him Savior, or Jesus. Jesus will become the greatest among men. He will be known as the son of the highest God. God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the covenant family of Jacob forever. But I've never been with a man. How can this be possible? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Most High will overshadow you. That's why this holy child will be known as not just your son, but also the Son of God. It sounds impossible, but listen. You know your relative Elizabeth has been unable to bear children and is now far too old to be a mother. Yet, she has become pregnant, as God willed it. Yes, in three months, she will have a son. So, the impossible is possible with God. Here I am, Lord, your humble servant. As you have said, let it be done to me.
is seen not simply as a historical person, the young Jewish wife of Joseph, who is the mother of Jesus. She is also, in the shared understand, understanding of our heritage, the archetype of all humankind. She is humanity responding to the breath of the Spirit, accepting the indwelling of God. Like Mary, we open to the Word. Like Mary, we gestate and give birth to the Word through the activities of our lives. Like Mary, we are involved in the process of bringing God into the world. Like Mary, we are the finite earthen vessels in which infinite divine life is poured. We are active recipients, persons whose freedom of choice is never violated. We can refuse. Or we can agree and let the most intimate recesses of our lives be inhibited, transformed, made new by God. But the divine action is neither mechanical or invasive. It requires our conscious cooperation. What is the word of God that you are waiting for? The tension of longing heightens as we draw closer to Christmas. Will we hear God's word to us then? Will it be dramatic or simple? Will we hear it in the everyday? Will we hear it in the longing of others? What our hearts long to hear is spoken in God's word made flesh. That which we hope for and trust is the divine love of God who sent Jesus to walk among us. Human life is the language of God. That same word leads us today. As the word was sent forth from the mouth of God, so Jesus sends us forth. Come, follow me, he says. With Mary, we pray, let it be done to me as you say. Let us pray. Word of love, <clears throat> issue forth from the mouth of God. Break open our deafness. Enlighten our minds. Strengthen our will. Engage our hearts so that we might hear not only with our ears, but with the fullness of being. We cry out to you from depths unfathomable even to ourselves. Our longing is stretched paper thin. We need to know the love and life language you speak to us each day. Lead us to our loving God. Bless us, embrace us with the arms of courage and hope that we may walk with you along the path of the ways of God. Amen.
Listen to these words from the Gospel of Luke. And the heavenly messenger was gone. Mary immediately got up and hurried to the hill country in the province of Judah, where her cousins Zacharias and Elizabeth lived. When Mary entered their home and greeted Elizabeth, who felt her baby leap in her womb, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth shouted her greetings. You are blessed, Mary, blessed among all women, and the child you bear is blessed. And blessed I am as well, that the mother of my Lord has come to me. As soon as I heard your voice greet me, my baby leaped for joy within me. How fortunate you are, Mary, for you believed that what the Lord told you would be fulfilled. The inner resonance, the shared recognition, <clears throat> the mutual awe and delight of these two women, Mary and Elizabeth, has often served as a reminder that we bear Christ to one another and that in our interaction, the Spirit is called down and vitalizes us. Daring to dream what is deepest in our collective longing is what makes us most human and fully alive. Advent is a time in which we are invited to turn our attention to the fact that we are recipients of a promise. What we all dream what we all hope for is simple. We dream that the glimpses of the fullness of love that we sense occasionally in our lives show us what we were created to become. We know something of the wideness of God's promise through the longings of our own hearts and through the moments of graced encounter with one another. We all need companions on the way. We need one another to know and grow into God. As we come to discover that restless yearning within ourselves, we begin to identify it in the longings of others. Soon we perceive that our desire, when, we, when shared, is enlivened and inflamed. The mutual exchange of love between persons gives birth to God in and between us. In this sense, we're all pregnant with, imposs with possibility.
God in whom all life begins, who bursts the seed to fruit, bestow your blessings on our lives. Here let your love find root. Bring forth in us the Spirit's gifts of patience, joy, and peace. Deliver us from numbing fear and grant our faith increase. Unite in mutual ministry our minds and hands and hearts that we may have the grace to seek the power your peace imparts. So let our very gifts combine to glorify your name, that in all things, by word and deed, we may your love proclaim. Through tears and laughter, grief and joy, enlarge our trust and care. So bind us in community that we may risk and dare. Be with us when we gather here to worship, sing and pray. Then send us forth in power and faith to live the words we say. Within their wombs, Elizabeth carried the messenger and Mary the message of God's revolutionary love, love with skin on it. Each Advent, we are called to be in awe and wonder with Mary and Elizabeth about that which lies within us individually and communally. How are we preparing ourselves time and time again to give birth to such incredible love? How are we midwives to one another in bringing such love into the world? Valerie Kerr speaks in the image, to the image of womb and how it relates to the challenges of our time in her book, See No Stranger, a memoir and manifesto, manifesto of revolutionary love. And here Valerie's words, is all that we are going through in our world the darkness of the tomb or of the womb? I don't know. All I know is that the only way we will endure is if each of us shows up to the labor. Revolutionary love is the call of our times. Love, though, is more than a feeling. Love is a form of sweet labor, fierce, bloody, imperfect, and life-giving, a choice we make over and over again. If love is sweet labor, love can be taught, modeled, and practiced. This labor engages all our emotions. Joy is the gift of love. Grief is the price of love. Anger protects that which is loved. And when we think we have reached our limit, wonder is the act that returns us to love. Revolutionary love is the choice to enter into wonder and labor for others, for our opponents, and for ourselves in order to transform the world around us. It is not a formal code or prescription but an orientation to life that is personal and political and rooted in joy. Loving only ourselves is escapism. 
loving only our opponents is self-loathing. Loving only others in, is ineffective. All three practices together make love revolutionary, and revolutionary love can only be practiced in community. We birth the beloved community by becoming the beloved community. God calls us to give birth to the holy in our lives. Like Mary, God invites us to be co-creators as we continually seek to bring Christ into the world. Dory Sherrill writes, God invites us all to be God-bearers, to reveal God's love and grace, to embody God to the world, we are invited to continue the incarnation, which was not a once and for all event, but rather a process, something that continues still, a continual coming of God in Christ to be present to us. God invites us, and like Mary, we choose. The call to bear Christ in us does not ask for passive acceptance, for passivity will not provide the strength to survive the birth. 
The call does not demand conformity or unquestioning submission because as Mary discovered, agreeing to bear the Christ often requires stepping outside societal boundaries and asking, how can this be? In the shadows of Mary's ascent to let it be, lies the possibility that she or we can choose to let it not be. God leaves the choosing to us. And it is our choice on this, the first Sunday of Advent, whether we're going to join and welcome the Christ into our hearts. Thank you, Rick, for being one of our readers and our musicians tonight, Kelly on piano, Ike on bass, and Matt on woodwinds. Hear now our benediction and closing number. Let us leave this place with a sense of expectancy, visions of hope-filled possibilities, and a willingness to labor with one another as we bear Christ to the world. For God's creation is not yet done. Working together, let us give birth the beloved community by becoming the beloved community. Thank mm-hmm. you.